Apple Music Classical Review, Opus 1, Movement 1, Allegro Vivace. Okay, but for real, I love classical music. I studied it in college. I was principal trumpet in an orchestra for several years, and Apple just launched an app dedicated for classical music. It's called Apple Music Classical. The app does a great job with discoverability, with creating playlists, and I love how it organizes things like works and composers. So let's dive into it, and I'll mention a couple bugs and things that I hope Apple improves in future versions. So this is the Apple Music Classical app. It's a free download, and if you subscribe to Apple Music or you're on one of the Apple One services bundles, you have total access to it. It looks a lot like Apple Music. It has a Listen Now, a Browse tab, and your library, which we're going to talk about some of the playlists and ways that's organized. By the way, I did create a playlist just of my favorite classical music. I'll put a link in the video description. We'd love to know your favorites as well in the comments. Number one, let's talk about search. When you're in the stock music app, searching for a piece like Lacrimosa, which is a movement from Mozart's Requiem, you do get some results. Some of these might be from the Requiem, but there's also artists called Lacrimosa, and that's definitely not the classical work. A big difference when you're searching in the app dedicated for classical music, searching for something like Lacrimosa immediately brings up the work by Mozart, which is his Requiem. You'll also see other composers who wrote a piece called Lacrimosa, and you'll also see classical music albums with that piece displayed. When looking for classical music, many times the artist might be the orchestra, it could be the composer, or maybe it's a solo instrumentalist for that recording. So the Apple Music Classical app does a much better job of separating work from composer, from orchestra and artist to soloist. For instance, one of my favorite symphonies is the Brahms Third Symphony. And so if I search for Brahms Three here in the Apple Music Classical app, it immediately shows me works of Johann Brahms, and I can go directly to the symphony. It's easy to tell which is the symphony in F major, and I love how the classical app actually breaks down separate recordings from this same work. So these are all Brahms Third Symphony, but popular recordings and even an editor's choice recording. Again, you could search for Brahms Three in the stock music app, but you do get more variation as the pieces and the orchestras that are displayed. The classical app just does a better job of showing you separate recordings for the same work by the same composer. Speaking of works and composers, I love how the classical app actually has specific places in your library for recordings, works, and composers. You can actually search for a specific composer like Brahms or Mozart, and you can add that composer to your favorites. Then you can tap one of those composers and see his most popular works. You can play those up there. You also see latest albums with that composer's works recorded, and even a short biography of the composer, which is really cool. I also love the recording sections of the library because different recordings of the same piece are very different. If you look at the classical music playlist I put in the video description, there were actually many versions of Mozart's Lacrimosa, one of my favorite pieces, and a lot of them I actually didn't prefer. There was actually one particular recording of the Lacrimosa, and I love that I can save the Berlin Philharmonic version of Mozart's Requiem right here in my favorite recordings. Also another one of my favorite pieces is the Modal by Smetna. I can save that work and add it to my favorites, and now I can see all the recordings of that work, browse different orchestras and different recordings, then I can see which one I like the best and add that to a playlist. Sometimes it can be a little frustrating when I'm looking at a work and I want to add that composer to my favorite composers, it can be hard to navigate that and quickly add it to my favorites. For instance, here I'm looking at Dvorak's Symphony No. 9 from The New World, and I know this is a Dvorak Symphony, and I can add this recording to my favorites, but there's no quick way to jump to the composer and then favorite him. The best way to do that is actually from the search tab, searching for Dvorak, then I can tap his name here in the composer section, and I can favorite him here. Again, love these composer pages though. Great picture up at the top, shows their popular works. One of my other favorite composers is Arvo Pert, who makes great choral music, and I can favorite him as a composer, and then he shows up here in my library. Now, speaking of playlists, playlists can be a little funny here in Apple Music Classical. You can create playlists, and I do love how they're displayed. Here's my top classical works playlist. I like how it separates the works name there as a headline, and then the recording. Again, looks great here in this playlist option, and this playlist is available in the stock music app as well. If I want to share this though, I actually have to do it from the stock music app. There's actually no way to share a playlist here in the Apple Music Classical app. So I'm not sure if someone opens this playlist link, if I text it to them, will that playlist open in Apple Music Classical or the stock music app? I don't see a way to force which app it opens in. And like I said, there's no way to share it here from Apple Music Classical. Also, if you added songs in the stock music app to a playlist that's shared in both apps, but that track isn't available in the classical app, you'll get this error that says you actually can't edit the playlist anymore in Apple Music Classical because there are non-classical tracks included, which is a little weird. Now, for those just browsing the Apple Music Classical app, Apple has done an incredible job at helping discover new music. In the Browse tab, you can search by genres. They have lots of curated playlists with great mixes. And I love this tab where you can actually browse by instrument and my instrument right here, trumpet, actually found a great rendition of the Haydn Trumpet Concerto in E-flat. 
Listen to that. Love this ability to browse by instrument. Although B. Gilmore on Twitter pointed out, no tuba here in the instrument section, and tuba is definitely an orchestra instrument. Apple's also done a great job on this first tab, the Listen Now tab, to adding playlists and surfacing playlists that people might be interested in if they're new to classical music. I also highly recommend this story of classical that Apple put together. It's a narrated plus lots of music, and it actually introduces you to classical music, and they actually do a great job. One of the things they say in that recording is that classical music is weird, and for sure, I agree. Classical is not even a great term because that's only one time period of all the music composed. You have the Baroque, which came before classical. You have Romantic, Impressionism, 20th century. But trust me, do not look up 20th century music. Whatever you do, do not look up Milton Babbitt's Philomel. Don't do it. I warned you. But they do a great job of introducing the time periods and even walking you through what to listen for in some of these classical works, which is just so cool. Now you can also favorite artists here in the library, like Yo-Yo Ma on the cello, definitely want to favorite him. But what's weird is I can favorite some of my artists that definitely are included here in the app. One of my favorite trumpet players, which is Rolf Smedvig, actually has one of the best recordings of Haydn's concerto, but he's actually not available to add as an artist, even though he has recordings here in the Apple Music Classical app. Another great improvement is the now playing screen. Here's what it looks like to play the Jupiter movement of Gustav Holst's The Planets in the stock music app. Usually because classical works have very long titles and artist names, it just kind of scrolls here and it's hard to tell exactly what you're listening to. And there's not really more options to find more info about this recording. If I play that same track in Apple Music Classical, it does a great job of reformatting the text for the title so you can see the entire thing here on the now playing screen. There's also lots of Dolby Atmos recordings here, which sound great. And there's even an I info tab which gives me more information about the recording and links to the artist, the playlist I have it in, and quick links to the composer so I can go right to Gustav Holst's page and listen to more works by him. Overall, I am loving the Apple Music Classical app and it's actually helped me rediscover some of my favorite works, some from different artists, some were the recordings that I loved back in college, and it gives me a great way to experience them both visually, like on the now playing screen, in the way it separates composers and works in the library, and I also love the offerings Apple has to introduce people to classical music who have maybe never listened before. There is still some weirdness on the playlist, whether you add tracks from the Stock Music app or Apple Music Classical and what's available where. While you can download the Apple Music Classical app on your iPad, it's just the blown up iPhone version. So hopefully Apple releases a legit iPad and Mac app for it. And while you will find some film scores here in the Apple Music Classical app, I do wish there was more of a focus maybe in the browse section on some of those genres, but I hope Apple will fix those in future updates. But for now, this is an incredible launch with an awesome library of classical works. And again, I have a playlist of my favorites down in the video description. Let me know which are some of your favorites. And finally, I know viewer retention is probably going to drop right now, but I actually wanted to thank some of my teachers, both from high school and college, that really instilled a love of music. Teaching can be a thankless job, and I see lots of videos on social media of how difficult it is right now. But I want to thank Mrs. McNaughton, my junior high band director, and Dr. Holland in high school. Mrs. Gleishenhaus, who passed away of cancer, but was an incredible choral director and made me love a cappella music. So many teachers in college, Dr. Tyndall, Dr. Harlan, Ed Bryan, Dr. Dan Gordon, and John Seibert. He was my teacher of music history. He made that class so tough. I mean, we had to identify classical works just by listening to like 15 seconds from some of the oldest works like the Epitaph of Sikilos, being able to distinguish Beethoven's symphonies. It was one of the hardest classes I took in college, but now that I'm on the other side, I'm so grateful for it. So thank you, John Seibert. And if you're ever in Central Florida, my wife is actually the principal flutist of the Lakeland Symphony Orchestra. They have lots of concerts throughout the year. They're about to do a John Williams concert, which is really cool. So if you're ever around Central Florida in the Lakeland area, look up the Lakeland Symphony Orchestra and support your local orchestra in your town or city. Many times it's lots of volunteers, or if they do get paid, it's not very much. Usually everyone works full-time jobs and they do the orchestra for fun on the side. So support your local orchestras. Go out and support the live arts, the fine arts, and again, I'd love to hear some of your favorite classical works down in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe to the channel. Got some great audio reviews coming up. And if you want to know how the HomePod 2 sounds when playing classical music, have that review above, also in the description. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next time.